Shut it off! Good afternoon. Well, the beans are done. It's time to start corn harvest. So we're getting combine ready. We've already made it down here to Berkey. And fueling and environmentaling. And uh, we gotta get the combine switched over, see if we can't figure out what was causing our little vibration yesterday. Get the corn head out. Got a few things to do before we'll be able to get started here. They had to get the head out. So one of the first things we've gotta do We'll start it kind of at the front and work our way back. Uh, the feeder house drum has to be raised up. This thing kind of floats, but uh, we run it in the down position for beans and wheat. We run it in the up position for corn. That is changed with this handle here and one on the other side. We pull this locking ring out and then rotate it forward. Kind of like that. And now you can see there's a bigger gap on that side than this side. Not right now. Okay, also here, this chain needs tightened up again, so we're gonna do that. Okay, I've just about got this chain where I want it. It's, it's, it's not bad. It's maybe a little bit tight, but it'll stretch. It'll keep stretching and wearing, and that's why we replace that chain every year, because it wears. All right, the next stuff we need to do to convert this from the, uh, beans to corn is on our straw chopper here. We've got to remove this knife bank, which basically just means opening this handle pushing that up which pulls those out and then tightening it back up those knives are what the the knives and the hammers and the straw chopper uh, cut against basically they go between these and slice the stems and up uh, uh, from the soybeans and stuff but corn cobs and stalks are way too tough for that and so it will break stuff so we take them out and we need to change our straw chopper speed, so open up this cover and shift this handle. Just push it all the way in, just like that. And then we need to shift our rotor into the low speed range. Just push that handle in. I gotta use two hands to try and get it, uh, rotate the pulley a little bit, this pulley, so that it'll slip into gear. Everything so. And that is really all it takes from the outside. Everything else can be done from in the cab. However, there's one more thing that I am gonna do. I don't often, or sometimes I don't, but this time I am. And that's uh, some spacers under these covers. I'll show you in just a second. Okay, so up here, this is kind of the back half of the rotor. These are separator grates. They're designed to let all the grain fall down through them, down there onto our sieve and chafer and stuff. Um, there's these spacers up here that they want you to put in for corn on these front three. Uh, so sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. If we're switching back and forth between corn and beans, I usually leave them out. But since we're done with beans and it's all corn from here on out, I'm going to put those spacers in. Basically, we just take the bolts out, this drops down, put the spacer in between those two, put the bolt back in. There, all right, so those spacers are in. All that does is give it a little bit more clearance between the tines, the fingers in there, and the outside of the cage to help yeah. keep cobs from breaking up so yeah. they Get a little cleaner grain tank sample from that. Okay, so since I got all that stuff outside done, we're going to move the combine. We're going to back out into the field here and uh, blow it off a little bit better. I brought my blower down today. And uh, then we're going to start it up while I got Dad here and Jack is here. And we're going to see if we can figure out what our vibration is, where it's coming from. See if it's even still there. Maybe, maybe switching the corn and changing speeds of everything will make it go away. I don't know. It's possible. It's happened before. Alright, I'm going to have Dad run it <coughs> for me. And we'll see if we can pinpoint something. I don't know it's so dusty. I can't see anything. I don't hear it out here. It looks off. Feels like it's on this side of the machine and we're going to put it on the upwind side so we can actually look at it here. Something's knocking, I hear it. It's gotta be in that shaker, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. Shut it off! Found it. That's no good. 
Okay, well, I know what the problem is. Uh, unfortunately, it's Sunday. I don't know that I'm gonna be able to get it apart. It's pretty unlikely. Um, but we can take it apart and see what we got. It's possible we've got a bearing. It's highly likely we don't, but we'll see. Um, so anyway, uh, it's the it's the, the bearing that holds the, that drives the shaker arms on the sieve frame. It's real close to where we replaced that arm the other day, and that bearing was not out when we did it because I looked very closely at it. So whether it was damaged when that bushing went out in that arm, or if it's a new problem, I don't know. But we know what it is. We know how to fix it. So just got to tear it apart. Video evidence of how this goes back together. Okay. Now what? Looks like this arm's got to come off so we can get this plate apart. And there's a bearing in there. I don't know if that whole thing will just pull off or what, but we're going to take that apart. Okay, we're getting pieces apart here. We got uh, this big bearing with that offset off. That one was a little bit difficult. Uh, we've got another one here that we're going to have to get off. I gotta get this taken off this arm and these bolts on this flange just taken off so we can get to the bearing behind it there. <sighs> Look at this. <laughs> it's got a cord. It doesn't have enough go. <laughs> All right, we're getting in a little closer. There's a locking collar on this bearing. I got to get a Allen wrench and take the set screw out, and then and then it gets a little more complicated. I might have to get the torch yet. You need a picture of your bloody knuckle too. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> it happens. Oh, you wipe. Okay, well we got I got half this flange off that holds the bearing. Problem is, if I lose one of these bolts, it falls in. This gets a lot harder. So we're gonna get some wire and wrap around them to try and hold them in place, but yeah, that one's risky. Then we gotta get this inner race off, which is also gonna be tricky. It's coming. Okay. We got it all apart. Now it all has to go back together, but we gotta get the bearing first, which not gonna happen today. All right, well, I'm cleaning stuff up here. We've got this as far, as far apart as we can get it. Cleaned up the shaft so it's ready for us to get put back together, like I said. Um, we've got some of the parts here. My tools. I'm not going to get the parts today. It is a Sunday. It's 3.30, almost 4 o'clock. Ain't going to happen today. But uh, I did look them up. Our local dealer that we normally deal with has the parts, almost all of them that we need, everything that we would have to have. And... Uh, so I can go there and get them in the morning if I have to, but there's a John Deere dealer two miles from here. That it's much more convenient when we're down here to get them from them if they have them. So I'm going to see, I'll call them in the morning, see if they've got them. If they do, I'll come here, just get that stuff, and we'll get it back together quicker. If I have to go to Jonesville, it's 45 minutes the opposite direction from here, from our home farm. But I'll go and get them, and then we'll make it down here, and it's just going to take us a little longer. So uh, in the meantime, while I'm waiting for that stuff for the rest of today, I am going to hook the corn head up. We can't run it, but we can check the oil levels and get everything hooked up. And, and maybe I should wash my windows so I can see something. Yikes. So every row's got a gearbox, and there's a plug right here, and there's a dipstick on there uh, to check the oil levels. So we got to pull those out and just double check them. Can I have the head down to check this oil back? Yes. Let me pull these out. Check the oil. It's good. And we put it back. Better close that door too. So underneath this here, gearboxes and the drives, and there's a grease slip clutches. So we are hitting those. A couple shots of grease each. And we grease the detail It'll take a few acres to get everything shined up. The auger and the auger trough, the snap and rolls, the gathering chains. Um, but two years ago in the winter, I had this whole corn head apart. We did a ton of work to it. We put all new gathering chains, new sprockets, new chain guides, and new snapping rolls on. And then last year we only had like 600 acres of corn, so we didn't use it very much and nothing more very much. So we didn't uh, go through it too much last winter, didn't need to. Everything should be in pretty good shape. Um, 
You'll notice these snapping rolls here. If you're familiar with them at all, you'll know those are not stock. These are called uh, 360 chain rolls from uh, 360 yield centers. Uh, I liked them last year. We'll see how they do this year. Uh, conditions are going to be drastically different, so we'll see. Um, but they did a good job. Our old ones were getting pretty wore out, so uh, we like that. The gathering chains should all be in good shape. It's John Deere's Romax kits that we put on here. So, yeah. Quick lesson on how corn heads work. I'll show you better in the field, but basically, row comes in here. These chains convey ears and stuff up towards the auger and these snapping rolls turn really fast they grab the stalk pull it down when the ear hits these plates we call these the deck plates the ear snaps off it gets pinched in there and then those gathering chains take it up to the auger auger conveys it to the center and then it feeds in to the combine so that's how that works these feelers are for our height sensor uh, it automatically adjusts the height as we go through the field and then these ones here or for steering, they feel the row and keep the combine uh, following the, the row. And even taking the time to wash my filthy windows so we can see when we're ready to go tomorrow. Track. Yeah, you guys want to learn about this, eh? What year is it, Jack? 41, I think. 41. I think it's three years newer than my uh, F12 we've been working on. On the gas. Yeah. It's got a it's got a six foot belly mower or five foot. Make sure it's in neutral. <laughs> oh, gotta hook up the battery. Turn on the ignition. Set the choke. Oh man. Look at that. Cool. Offset seat. How many horsepower was this one? Do we know? Twelve. Twelve? Okay, so it's about the same size. All right, got a PTO. What's this? Belt. Oh, that's for the mower. PTO. Yep. 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 A lot of this looks familiar. This gauge here looks the same as one on the F12. Mower deck lift. Yep. Nice. The seat's offset. That's weird to me, but. Oh, we got a new steering wheel. It got new front tires that actually work on there. Yeah, not too bad. Okay guys, made it back to the farm here at Waldron. Um, kind of a bummer we didn't get to start today, but I'm glad I figured out what that shake and vibration was on the combine and we can get that fixed. It really isn't that big of a job. It did take us quite a while to get it apart, but uh, it, it, it should go back together fairly quick. We got everything cleaned up now. We know how it works and how it goes together. So I'm gonna get that bearing that went bad. I get any one of those. And I'm also gonna try and get those other two uh, that are on them shaker arms because we got it apart. So we might as well replace them now. Um, but yeah, shouldn't shouldn't really take too long. Hopefully we'll, the dealer close will have them so it won't really cost us much time in the morning. If I got to run to Jonesville, it'll take an extra hour or two. Um, but we'll get it figured out and get it back together and we will be shelling corn. Well, I shouldn't say that. I hope to be shelling corn tomorrow. There's a pretty good chance of rain actually. So if it's raining, might delay things another day. This is what it is. So anyway, have a great uh, day, night, evening. I would say weekend, but it's Sunday afternoon. You're seeing this on Monday, so it's not the weekend anymore. And uh, I will see you guys tomorrow. Oh, today is the 11th. Two days, two days, which tomorrow uh, will be the one year anniversary of me making videos hard to believe been a year already so uh, I don't know let's see if I can't find something special it might be the start of corn harvest that might be what we do so we'll see uh, anyway questions comments leave them down below hit that like and subscribe buttons and uh, we'll see you guys tomorrow